Today we're going to talk about how to write settings that appropriately challenge your characters. So stick around. By the way, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Bad Parts, also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. One of my subscribers requested a video on the subject of setting versus character, or more specifically, how to use setting as an obstacle that gets in the way of a character's goals. And we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to go over some basic things like what a goal is, what an obstacle is, how to use setting as an obstacle, and then I'm going to get into the three types of setting-related obstacles. And then we're going to finish off the video with an example from Lord of the Rings Return of the King. The first thing I want to talk about is what is a goal? And very simply, a goal is a tangible thing that a character wants. It could be something like money or love or to win a boxing match or to escape prison or anything along those lines. It's, it's whatever, a, whatever tangible thing your character wants. And I want to point out that a character can have a goal for a particular scene that differs from their goal for the overall story. So for example, in Star Wars, Luke has many different scene goals. He wants to, at one point, convince his uncle to let him attend the Academy. He wants to deliver the droids to Obi-Wan. He wants to locate the princess. He has a lot of different goals throughout the story that are scene goals. But his overall goal in Star Wars, in the original movie, is to deliver the data tapes to the Rebel Alliance. All right, now let's talk about obstacles. And what an obstacle is, an obstacle is anything that prevents your character from achieving their goal, whether it's a scene goal or whether it's the overall goal for the story. All right, now that we've got that squared away, let's talk about how to use the setting as an obstacle. And there's a three-step process to this. It's very simple. First step here is to define your character's goal. Very simply, what do they want? Second thing, determine how the setting can interfere with that goal. You have to use your brain here. You have to come up with some creative ideas. Know your setting. Know what, what the setting itself is capable of. Know who's in charge of this setting. Or did the villains design the setting? Things like that. Ask yourself, how can I use this setting to get between the character and their goal? And then the third thing is to remember that characters can influence the setting, especially your villains. They can help design the setting, they can change the setting, they can use the setting against your heroes. But your heroes also can take that setting and use it for their own game. Now here's an example from Star Wars. If you remember about midway through the movie, Luke, Han, and Chewbacca, they infiltrate the detention area and they're trying to rescue Princess Leia. And that's step one. The goal is to rescue Leia and escape the detention area. But, of course, we need to determine what our obstacles are. And since we're on the Death Star, there's of course going to be a bunch of guards there because this is a military base, so there's going to be guards there. There's also going to be cameras there. Of course, our heroes have to take care of the guards. They have to take care of the cameras. And when they do get rid of the guards and the cameras, then all of a sudden there are reinforcements being sent. And then the setting itself serves as a major obstacle because there's only one escape route from the detention area. The only way to escape is to go through the elevators, but because there's reinforcements coming, all of a sudden those elevators are blocked up. There's no way out for Luke and his friends. But we have to remember step three. Remember that characters can influence the setting. Not just your villains, but also your heroes. And that's what's happening here. As the stormtroopers are starting to pressure our heroes, Leia finds another escape route. She destroys a grate that's covering a garbage chute and the heroes escape using a different part of the setting. Now let's talk about the three types of setting-related obstacles. And I broke these down into three different categories so that things would be a little easier to understand. The first category here is physical obstacles. And this is pretty obvious. Anytime you have a setting, you need to consider that certain parts of your setting could potentially challenge or trap your heroes. And let me give you some examples. First example comes from the 2015 movie Everest. And this is about a group of people who want to climb Mount Everest. And there are plenty of physical obstacles that they face along the way. Things like the terrain, altitude sickness, freezing temperatures, the need for bottled oxygen, and later on in the story, a major storm. Another example comes from the movie Top Gun Maverick. And in this movie, the goal for our heroes is that they want to destroy this uranium enrichment plant. And the location of the target forces Maverick and his crew to make rigorous preparations beforehand. And when the journey actually begins, it puts immense physical strain on the crew. Now, the second category of setting-related obstacles are social obstacles. And these come about when you have a setting that creates a society that opposes the hero. So, for example, in the movie Mean Girls, in this movie, Lindsay Lohan's character is somebody who's been homeschooled her whole life, and now she finds herself in a high school setting. And her goal is to fit in, to survive. 
And the thing about the high school setting is that it creates this social hierarchy that she has to navigate. And it causes a lot of tension between her and her friends. And it also challenges her identity at many different points in the story. Another example would be from the Batman. And in this movie, Gotham City breeds corruption among its leaders. And because of this, it gives rise to the Riddler, who starts killing off major people throughout the city of Gotham. And it's up to Batman to try and navigate this hostile city and bring the Riddler to justice. And the third and final type of setting-related obstacles are character fears and weaknesses. And what these are, these are basically psychological issues or physical weaknesses or any other type of weakness that may cause the setting to be more intimidating than it actually is. So, for example, in the movie Jaws, Chief Brody, his goal in this movie is to kill a shark. However, he happens to have a severe phobia of water, and it's something that he's been dealing with ever since he had a near-drowning experience as a child. So when he has to go after a shark, well, guess what, Brody? Sucks to be you. You're going to be around water for much of the movie. The setting is going to have a psychological impact on him. And then one more example. This is an example of a character who is suffering from a physical weakness. In the movie Bone Tomahawk, Patrick Wilson's character, he wants to rescue his wife who has been captured by cannibals. But he has a major leg injury and he has to make a long journey in order to rescue his wife. So what would normally be a pretty rigorous journey becomes a challenging and overwhelming overwhelming journey for Patrick Wilson's character as he's trying to get by on his busted leg. All right, now let's get to our big example. We're going to talk about Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. This is, of course, the third movie in the trilogy. It wraps things up. And the goal in this movie for Frodo is to deliver the ring to Mount Doom. That's his goal. And Mordor in this movie is a great example of how a setting can challenge the hero in various ways, not just physically, but also in terms of, of those social obstacles and psychological obstacles and weaknesses and, and things like that. Early on, we see Frodo and his crew struggling to avoid an army of orcs that is leaving to go after Gondor. And we, we see this early on. It's a social obstacle because Frodo and his friends are in enemy territory right now. Another obstacle they face shortly after that is they have to climb this steep wall. And that's, that, of course, is a physical obstacle. It's pretty simple, but it nonetheless gives us a visual sense of what they're going through, the struggles they have to overcome. Shortly after this, we see that isolation is starting to have an impact on Frodo, and the length of the journey is having an impact on him as well. And this is going to cause psychological obstacles for him, because the ring's influence on Frodo is starting to impair his judgment, and then Gollum is getting into Frodo's head. He's saying things like, oh, you know, you can't trust Sam. You can't trust him. He's going to turn on you. He's going to steal your ring, things like that. And then Gollum goes out of his way to frame Sam as this guy who's stealing food, and he starts pointing the finger, and then eventually Frodo turns on Sam and he says, I don't trust you anymore. I want you gone. And then not long after that, Gollum leads Frodo into a trap. He takes advantage of the psychological obstacles that Frodo is facing and he leads Frodo into a trap where he's attacked by a giant spider. And of course, that giant spider is an extension of the setting. Later on, after Frodo is rescued by Sam, they recognize that they're staring down Sauron's army. There's a bunch of orcs scattered across the valley. In order to get to where they need to go, they have to blend in. And this is, of course a social obstacle that they face. They, they dress themselves up in orc armor, they start acting like orcs, eventually they cause a ruckus and they get themselves out of there escaping this social obstacle. And then finally, at the very end of the story, Frodo faces the temptation of the ring. And this is a psychological obstacle because once he reaches the area where he can destroy the ring, where he can throw it into the lava and finally destroy it, once he reaches this area, he realizes that I'm going to have to part with this ring unless I hold on to it. And it's a difficult choice for him because he's grown attached to the ring over the course of the trilogy. And when he faces this, this difficult decision, the setting puts a lot of pressure on him and it it eventually causes him to succumb to the ring's power. So as I mentioned, Mordor is a great example of a setting that opposes the heroes in many different ways and creates conflict from start to finish. Question of the day, what is your favorite example of a story setting that opposes a hero? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of either one of my books. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend. And as always, remember to keep on writing.